Boa tarde a todos. Sou Norman Nadorf, advogado da Mayor Brown e membro do board da Bratec participando desde Houston. On behalf of Bratec and Mayor Brown, I want to welcome and thank you for joining us for this webinar entitled, The Show Must Go On, Post-Pandemic Opportunity and Challenges for Brazil's Oil and Gas Industry. This webinar is being broadcast live from our offices in Rio de Janeiro. However, please note that we have assured proper social distancing and other measures in accordance with applicable requirements for the well being of our guests and others. Following the discussion, panelists will answer questions submitted by the QA box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to submit your questions at any time. Now, without further ado, I would like to present to you our moderator, Mr. Marcio Felix, CEO of ENP Energy Platform and former Executive Secretary, Ministry of Mines and Energy of Brazil, who will, in turn, introduce the panel. Marcio, o palco é seu. Obrigado. Thank you, Norma. Thank you all for joining us today. It's a great moment for discussing how Brazil will go on this quite unique moment in our history. Uh, especially today, very nice evening, uh, in, afternoon in, in Rio de Janeiro, Guanabara Bay, probably you are seeing that. Uh, I'm very, very pleased to be here in the Maya Brown Tawil Checker facility in, in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, especially today, uh, we are celebrating last night's uh, game changer in, in Brazilian gas history. The lower house approved it or uh, in a very special way, a new bill for, for gas that has been discussed for seven years since 2013. So we have to celebrate. It's really a, Brazil is really a surprising country in spite of all our challenges we are facing these days. Uh, I strongly believe that Brazil will, will come with more and more opportunities in the energy sector oil and gas and other other areas. We are here to discuss today uh, more related to oil and gas, but gas is a, is a very important subject today. Uh, the country needs to celebrate that. Uh, and I, I'd like to say that to discuss all the developments about the scenario we are in, I'm pleased to introduce you to our expert panel. Today, we have the pleasure to hear from First, Mr. Felipe Curi, Director and Board Member of ANP, the National Agents for Oil, Natural Gas and Biofuels in our country. Thank you for joining us, Felipe. Thank you, Marcio. It's a very good uh, moment for us to, to have this panel and I really thank you, uh, Checker and, and to you, uh, Maya Brown, uh, to uh, to coordinate and organize this panel in a very special time for Brazil and for the oil and gas industry. It's a pleasure to, to be with you and the panelist, uh, Robert Ardeng, which is a very good uh, friend of ours. Thanks, Felipe. Our second guest is Roberto Ardeng. Uh, very friendly, very familiar with this relation with US and in, in Brazil. Uh, but it, Today he is in Rio de Janeiro. He's director of international relations of Petrobras. And uh, thank you for being here, Roberto. Hello, Marcio. Hello, Norman. Uh, a warm welcome to uh, my friends from Houston, a city where I have lived for many years and I miss so much uh, the Texas style. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, thank you for uh, Toy Checker and uh, Mario Brown and especially Alexandre Checker that is here with me uh, for this opportunity, uh, opening to Petrobras some space for us to talk something about the oil industry and perspectives for the future. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Atengi. And last but not the least, Mr. Alexandre Checker is global head for oil and gas of Mike Brown. Thank for having us, Alex. for us to accept the invitation. It's a pleasure to stay with you, Marcio, Ardengi, 
Felipe, I mean, old friends in the oil and gas industry, and the day could not be better, you know. <laughs> Yesterday, I'll not say even at night, yes. the, the new gas law was approved in the lower house in the parliament, and it looks like, I mean, the vote, the vote, I mean, the approval was 351 to 100 votes, so very, as a massive support from the Brazilian government and the parliament of the new gas law, and hopefully in the Senate, things will be easier and faster. <laughs> and But as I said, the day could not be better for us to organize it. Thank you all for the invitation to stay here today. And thanks, Bratec, for the organization. Okay, we, we're all honored to, to have you here today. Uh, now that you are all properly introduced, I would like to start this panel by listening to the thoughts of each one of you about the bidding rounds we have seen Brazil to open for starting uh, for starting with Felipe Curi. Please, the floor is yours, Felipe. Thank you, Marcio. Well, um, um, I, I would like to start uh, um, uh, with a, a very brief uh, history about where we started and where we are right now. So the last three years, and, and I think Marcio and Roberto participate very close in this process, uh, we've been able to to deliver a major transformation in the upstream business in, in Brazil. So as, as a result, we have um, uh, uh, about 27, $27, 26 billion dollars invested in signing bonus, 120 blocks were uh, acquired by companies. We have diversified the upstream business with uh, about uh, nine or 10 operators in, in, in the offshore business. Uh, we've delivered so many transformational changes uh, uh, regarding to, to the policies and, and, and regulation, and we were able to really change the game uh, the last three years. Now, uh, the question for us is how we continue this momentum. Huh? We just uh, 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 witnessed a, a global crisis that has... Uh, various dimensions in terms of impact, you know, health crisis, financial crisis, demand crisis, supply chain uh, uh, crisis, and so on. And I think all the, the countries are looking to the recover. And this process started, you know, um, as, as Brazilian government start to in, invest in, in reforms in some uh, uh, recent uh, important uh, uh, legal and policies that we will enable investments uh, and attract new investors. So it's a big responsibility for us now to, to uh, provide the, the right environment for uh, not only um, uh, national investments to, to, to come forward, but also foreign investments. And I think the yesterday uh, approval uh, with the new gas bill uh, at the lower chamber, it's really uh, a critical, important project for us for years to come, because it's going to open up the market, uh, is going to uh, help us in the recovery process uh, years to come. Regarding to the bid rounds, uh, there is a group in the, at the government level, a ministerial, interministerial group, that is looking to uh, improve uh, the attractiveness of the bid rounds. Uh, the major uh, um, and most important pillars of this discussion, so of course, is the, how uh, we're going to be able to um, identify uh, levers to attract new investments. And I think uh, Petrobras, you know, the preferred rights of Petrobras is part of that discussion. Uh, the type of regime and agreements that we're going to uh, be part of, you know, the next bid rounds, especially on the on the pre-south uh, region. Uh, this is under discussion, and and it has to to finish at the end of this year. So this year, I would say it's a setup for the next bid rounds under 2021, which we already have R17. It's a concession bid round. It's already set for for next year, and the pre-south seven but also the transfers right of OSEP and ATAPU, which is also in the discussion. The next uh, year, the 22 is also set. So the calendar is there. The question is, is really to, to become 
and to make the bids more attractive to new new investments. So this is a work in progress, and we 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 truly really believe this is uh, a, a, a game that Brazil Brazil has uh, has the foundation. Uh, Márcio, when he was part of the um, mining uh, uh, energy uh, ministry, helped quite a bit on building this foundation. So now. Uh, it's up to us to build on that momentum that was able, you know, the last three years we, we, we built and create the right environment to, to international investments uh, to, to participate in the next bid rounds. Thanks, uh, Felipe, uh, for our kind words and for your, uh, your explanation about our regulatory board, uh, body position. A lot of job has been done, but there have a lot of challenges ahead. So now let's listen a little bit from Mr. Roberto Adeng from Petrobras, our main players in Brazil. How Petrobras has divestment in one hand, but has invested a lot of a lot of money acquiring new acreage, and probably we'd like to hear from Mr. Adeng about new Petrobras. Uh, business plan related to acquisitions to acreage, not only in Presalto, but uh, in other areas in, in the Brazilian sedimentary bases in who knows abroad. Mr. Adeng, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Marcio. Uh, uh, a warm welcome also to Bratec, the Brazil Texas Chamber of Commerce, uh, in which I had the chance to be a board member when I was posted in Houston. And it's a pleasure also to be with uh, with you guys. Um, uh, 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 related to the uh, upcoming bidding rounds, I think that uh, Felipe Curi uh, from the oil and gas regulator has uh, set the tone, uh, mentioning that uh, we are pursuing uh, a very uh, fixed and uh, uh, firm uh, schedule of uh, opportunities uh, in Brazil, either in uh, deep waters, uh, shallow waters, uh, and also uh, other opportunities uh, around the Brazilian territory. Uh, this is very important because um, in our view, in Petrobras view, uh, Pet still has a, uh, Brazil has a lot of opportunities, interesting opportunities in many, many areas. We are still a, a country in which we have very low levels of uh, exploration uh, and there, is a, there are a lot of uh, hydrocarbons to be discovered in the country. Um, Petrobras has been very successful pursuing these opportunities over the years, uh, not to mention what we have done in the pre-south as one of the major areas that we are uh, right now uh, producing and exploring. And we have already announced um, uh, huge plans for the future to increase uh, our oil output. Um, Petrobras is one of the companies, one of the oil companies that has a very uh, uh, ambitious plans for the future. Uh, but we, are, we, are, we have these ambitious ideas or these ambitious plans because we have been able also to reduce a lot the cost of the extraction of oil. Today, we have been able to uh, pump oil from the pre-south uh, with a cost, or extraction cost, around $2.5 to $4 a barrel. So this is very competitive, uh, regardless uh, uh, what is going to happen in the market, but uh, still it's a very good price for the oil because pre-south uh, is uh, very, very profitable uh, in terms of oil output. Uh, and we are sure that there are other opportunities in Brazil, uh, not just to mention pre-south. So uh, we are very happy to hear from the regulator that they, they are continuing with the idea to uh, keep the, uh, the agenda for the next bidding rounds. And uh, we're looking forward to participate on those bidding rounds and see those opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Artengi. Uh, congratulations on Petrobras achievements, especially in the lifting costs in Brissault. It's amazing. It's a, probably a benchmark for, even for uh, Middle East Figures, uh, very good for, for us in, in Brazil, or for, for Petrobras. Uh, let's hear now about uh, from Mr. Cheque. He has been active in the last, he's a very young guy, but has been active since the very 
uh, first open of the market of oil and gas market in Brazil 20, 21 years ago. And uh, now have a new open of the market with gas, with uh, uh, pre-salt, the onshore with new achievements, uh, dif different, different challenges in, around the, the country. So please, the floor is yours. I have to mention that the picture that I have in the invitation is the one when I started to work in the oil and gas industry. So I have to change that picture. Everybody is, <laughs> is making jokes with myself because my picture is very old. So I have to change. But thanks. Thanks, Marcio. You know, I remember Marcio and Roberto, our presentations in Houston, 2017, 2016, right? 17. 17, yes. When we used to discuss that what's going on in Brazil right now, we said in 2017, it was much bigger than the opening of the oil and gas sector in the, in the late 90s. And the reason, is, uh, 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 the, the, the reason is Petrobras' strategy, basically. So I'd like to talk a little bit about upstream, midstream, and downstream. In the upstream, we have got a very good uh, uh, introduction and presentation from Felipe and Roberto. Uh, the lift of the pre salt $2.53, it's amazing. You know, uh, and this is the reason that when we had this COVID issue in the beginning, I thought that maybe for countries such as Brazil, uh, it's not so bad in the mid and long term because the money that used to flow to shale will flow to offshore worldwide, where you have uh, an OPEX much lower than the one that you have in the in the shale uh, in the shale assets in the US. So in the upstream, we have we and Marcio was the I mean, was, a, I would say, a very important person in to organize it, like the, the bid rounds, the, the assets that the Brazilian government has offered with the ANP in the last three, four years. Uh, and we are having now, I would say, uh, investment revolution in the offshore upstream Brazil. Uh, in the midstream, the new gas law yesterday approved, hopefully to be approved very soon in the Senate. Uh, we are going to have also revolution in Brazil. Uh, if you compare the Brazilian infrastructure for natural gas or transportation of hydrocarbons, it's a shame. You know, we get embarrassed as Brazilians because there is almost no infrastructure. So uh, I used to say that our issues are our opportunities. So this is something that you offer a lot of opportunities for investors, Brazilian investors, international investors, to explore uh, uh, the natural gas market of the seven, eight largest economy of the world that you have a big room to develop. I mean, as a matter of comparison, the natural gas consumption in Brazil is five times smaller than Argentina and our economy is five times bigger than Argentina. So you can, I'm not comparing with the US or any other country of the world, but our neighbor, Argentina. Uh, in the downstream, refineries, Petrobras is divesting uh, eight refineries, nine refineries uh, and and Brazil is the sixth or fifth largest downstream market of the world. So it's a new opportunity for investments in oil and gas in Brazil. So, uh, and I like the name Norman, when you said the show must go on because in a few words, you can see the bunch of opportunities that we're having. And the last one that I think it is a dream for some guys such as Newton Monteiro, the former director of ANP and including Marcio, the divestment of Petrobras in the in, in, in onshore assets. You know, Petrobras has a, a lot on the plate. They have to focus on this pre salt $2.53 lifting, and they are selling, and Petrobras is selling a lot of onshore assets that will change the dynamic of the onshore market in Brazil. Uh, we can make, one more time, we can make a comparison with our neighbor, let's say Ecuador, that has an oil output about 500,000 barrels of oil a day. Uh, is small territory in comparison with Brazil, and our output on shore is about 100,000, 150, Marcio. 100. 100,000 barrels of oil. So you see the bunch of opportunities that we have in Brazil also in onshore. So this is something that, uh, 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 in a few words, we can see that in upstream, midstream, and downstream, we are having a revolution in the oil and gas industry in Brazil that for sure will bring a lot of investments and opportunities in these countries for in the upcoming years. Thank you, Mr. Cech. Great points of view. And as we move forward with our discussion, I'd like to cover another topic uh, Mr. Cech has mentioned, is the downstream segment. And I'd like to know from Mr. Felipe Curi, 
uh, what they think he thinks about this matter. There should be a significant change in the downstream segment as a result of Petrobras refiner's divestment program. What do you foresee as the new role of ANP, our regulatory agents, in this new context? What major opportunities and challenges? Please, Philippe, you have three minutes to comment on. Well, uh, this is uh, uh, probably one of the most interesting opportunities. I mean, uh, Mr. Uh, Checker has mentioned the, the opportunities in the whole value chain. And I think this one in the, in the, in the downstream is really huge. We cannot underestimate the level of impact that Petrobras decision, strategic decision to divest eight refineries, which is about a half of he, the, the, the company's refinery capacity in the, in the next couple of years. So uh, ANP has an important role to look into uh, several dimensions in, in the regulation dimension, the competitive dimension and, and infrastructure and, and so on. And, and not only that, but look into the internal process or monitor the, uh, the national uh, supply of fuels and biofuels and, and ensure that uh, the, 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 the production of uh, fuels and biofuels it, it, uh, meet the demands for the coming years. So this, this has been uh, quite uh, well for now uh, until recently because you know we, we partnership with with Petrobras in, in several uh, activities related to the uh, national supply of the foods or biofoods. But since Petrobras is taking a different approach, ANP it's uh, building a transition plan and it's and it's an important role in this new uh, downstream market. Uh, there will be uh, opportunities, huge opportunities not only to invest in the refineries and the infrastructure associated with it, but also in downward to the value chain, uh, which is related to terminals, uh, distribution, uh, retail of foods and, and, and biofuels. Uh, therefore, ANP is working this uh, transition plan with, with the Minister of Mines and Energy and other uh, ministries to ensure that we continue to, to uh, support the country and, and deliver a quality and, 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 and good service to, to the society in the years to come. We cannot underestimate the, this change uh, given the size of, of the movement, given the implications uh, that I mentioned in, in several dimensions. And we need the reforms to ensure that the, the investments will come. And reforms are, are, are ongoing reforms, be it on, on, on the gas market that we just mentioned, but also at administrative level uh, and the tax level that uh, the country is promoting in this, this reform. And this combined with the divestment program that Petrobras has, has initiated a few years ago, um, not only in the refinery sector, downstream sector, but also in the various uh, segments such as the upstream and onshore, offshore. This will enable several investments uh, and, and opportunities for, for investors in the years to come. There is a, uh, if Marcio, if you, if you let me, I don't know if we're going to answer questions now, but th there are some questions coming from, from uh, the chat, but I think we're going to leave this for the, the, Felipe, uh, the uh, end. We have a Q&A session. I'd like to remind all of you, please okay. feel free to, to make your question, then we organize in just a few minutes this session. So thank you, Philippe, for your, uh, your points. Uh, I'd like now to, to, to check with Roberto the thoughts, his thoughts and Petrobras thoughts about the midstream. Petrobras is supporting all the, the segments, but midstream Petrobras in a kind of volunteer in the, with um, agreement with the, our antitrust department in Brazil, CADE, Petrobras is diversing, exchanging, uh, and how do you feed the, the gas infrastructure uh, that you have, uh, for instance, to bring the gas from deep waters to the, to the coast or to export 
through other places in Brazil or abroad, LNG facilities, or bring to the country? And how, how do you see uh, midstream activities in, in Petrobras, the new Petrobras approach? Yes, Mars, there is a big change, as Alexandre mentioned, uh, in Brazil in this uh, midstream area. Uh, first, because uh, uh, Petrobras, together with the antitrust uh, uh, department in Brazil, uh, we are selling half of our uh, refining capacity, our nine refineries, with a capacity of approximately 1.2 million barrels of oil a day. So this is 50% approximately of what we are able to refine. Uh, I want to remember you all that uh, Brazil is a unique country, not just in dimension, but also we are a large agriculture producer. Uh, we have a mobility very dependent on trucks and passenger cars. Most of the goods and uh, merchandise in Brazil are shipped uh, using trucks all over the country. So our consumption uh, ratio of uh, diesel and gasoline is very, very high compared to other countries. Just to give you one number, if the Brazilian economy grows 1%, the fuel consumption grows 2.5%. So we are not just the sixth market in the world, but to also we start a large uh, perspective of increasing uh, our consumption of fuels. So this creates a lot of opportunities for companies because this is a unique opportunity for reaching this market in these specific conditions. And this will create for Petrobras a condition in which you are going to uh, lower our leverage because we still have a leverage uh, uh, level that uh, we are not happy with. So we are going to be able to decrease our debt and also focus on the opportunities that we have, especially in gas transportation. We have a lot of oil and gas coming from the pre-salt. So the idea of uh, uh, having new uh, connections from our uh, pre-salt uh, uh, areas uh, with uh, the uh, onshore to have our oil and gas uh, produce it and also uh, go into the market is very attractive to Petrobras and we are going to see uh, all those opportunities coming in the future with this new strategy. Thank you, Mr. Adengue. A uh, relevant perspective for sure. And I would like to, to, to ask to Alex, uh, how do you, how do you, uh, Brazil has been very important, very famous worldwide because of deep waters and then pre south but uh, you, you you mentioned before but how about the onshore possibilities even not uh, considering uh, shale tight gas or other non-conventional resource how do you feel the the based on the divestments of petrobras based on the the permanent uh, acre the open acreage from a &P, how do you feel onshore how do, uh, do you have a you, you play a very important role in, in Brazil, discussing with the different players? How do you feel the temperature of onshore these days? Yes, I think, Marcio, the combination of Petrobras divestment plus the, the, the new gas law, and it's not only the new gas law because it's actually a transportation, a midstream law. We are calling gas law, but it's also for midstream. Uh, it's I would say it's the perfect positive storm. And why? Because uh, 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 one of the big issues for onshore producers is the lack of infrastructure in Brazil. And of course, once you have new players that will come up with new investments in these areas, and, and don't take me wrong, I mean, these areas, they became small for Petrobras. Petrobras with the big pre discoveries, they have to focus their cash and capital on these big profitable projects. And, and, the, and the fact is that Petrobras has not been investing on these areas in the last years because they have to direct the capital for the areas that they will be able to profit more, to make more money. On the other hand, these, I will not say small projects, but smaller, in, and everything is small in the oil and gas in, <laughs> if you compare with pre -salt. But these smaller projects is a great opportunity for mid-sized and smaller companies that they will bring a new dynamic to the Brazilian onshore market combined with the new uh, gas trans slash transportation law that will bring up a lot of infrastructure and, and also uh, opportunities of investments in Brazil because 
some of these oil fields, I mean, with some kind of hill work, you will be, you are, you'll be able to extend the production and also to increase the production. And also, once you have many different players working in the onshore market, uh, we have a much more dynamic market with much more operators that will be willing to invest and also to, to increase not only the production, but also the exploration activity uh, uh, of new areas in Brazil. I have made the comparison with Ecuador, but you can compare with Argentina or Colombia that they're mostly onshore. And if you compare the, the sedimentary base of Brazil and also the, the size of the country, we have a lot to do in onshore in Brazil. Great, Alex. Uh, if the audience has any question, please use the QA box in the lower bar of the screen to submit your question. You, you, be, you are very welcome. Uh, Move forward with our agenda. I would like to introduce a discussion that's currently taking lots of space on the news, especially today, uh, on the so-called new gas market law uh, in the, the program itself. What do you see as major opportunities and challenges? I would like to make the first question to Felipe. Well, I am... Um Major opportunities, uh, no doubt. You know, I, I think Alex uh, mentioned, you know, if you have a, a pipeline system compared to, to our neighbor Argentina, that it's really humble, uh, not to say insignificant for the size and dimension of the country. That, that right there is a, already a very important opportunity. I mean, if you if you look at, we have 9,000 kilometers of uh, transport uh, pipeline system versus our neighbor that should have uh, about the double and compared to US that has uh, 400 something thousand kilometers just in the transport system. In every single uh, part of the, the, of the chain, uh, be it on the processing units, be it LNG, transport, trading, um, and, and, and I would say uh, opportunities uh, that is related to infrastructure to internalize uh, in, in distribution and so on. This is a transformational change. It, you know, I wouldn't say that's perfect. It's a beginning of a process of, of transformation. Uh, ANP has uh, the responsibility to regulate some of the definitions that has been included in the law. Uh, like uh, authorization for transport uh, uh, companies and, and um, the big change there, you know, it used to be a concession process. Now it's authorization, which is much easier. So you submit your, your project to ANP, ANP uh, evaluate and, and grant you the authorization to build the, the, the transport pipeline. Uh, some aspects of uh, uh, verticalization, it's also important that, uh, you know, uh, we kept uh, the independence on the transport, but every single part of the, the system, rather than the transport, you were able to do some level of verticalization if it's appropriate. So this is really important for, for, for the new uh, commerce in this market. We see already uh, interest in TBG uh, transport system. So uh, there is a constant public hearing opened uh, last year and continue to be in the process that, you know, uh, Petrobras uh, uh, helped with, with, with allowing 10, 10 million metric, um, uh, cubic meters uh, to be in the public hearing. So we see lots of interest about that. So uh, companies are looking to, to, to participate in this process already. And with the legal uh, and, and this new bill, we should be able to move faster and uh, have some level of insurance on the legal uh, process because before that we, we have some instruments on, uh, on the regulatory uh, uh, stock, but not enough to ensure uh, that we grow fast in terms of, of opportunities. Uh, we see uh, uh, looking ahead that potential we have about uh, 140 billion uh, reais in new investments for the next 10 years in, in this gas, gas market, be it in, in the new, uh, you know, uh, 
comers from LNG, but also uh, from other players producing gas and bringing this gas, the pre-salt gas, to the onshore. We should be able to have a basket uh, uh, of gas coming from Bolivia, from the pre-salt imported, and that combination can lower the, the cost of, of gas uh, quite significantly, which will impact the competitiveness of the country. And, 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 and help some industry to lower their costs tremendously. And this is huge for, for Brazil uh, in the next coming years. The challenge, of course, is uh, it's how to harmonize and, and, and align uh, the regulation at the federal level with the state and local, which is part of the, the execution process. And I think states are eager to work with, with ANP and the federal entities to, to move forward with that because that means uh, transparency, stability, will uh, enable new investments to, to, uh, to come to, to each state, which is it's important at this moment, especially given the, the recent uh, fiscal uh, difficult of states and at the federal level. So I believe uh, the next coming months after we complete the approval process of this bill, uh, we will work uh, very hard and, and with the states to, to, to bring clarity and transparency how the rules is going to play at the state and local level. So that's uh, um, uh, my brief observation about this opportunity. Thank you, Felipe. Gas is a very uh, hot issue these days and to be for the not only gas, upstream, downstream, midstream, I guess everything in Brazil be hot. Uh, not only the temperature today in Rio, in, in our winter time, but it's, it's a very sunny day. Uh, Mr. Ardengue, you have played a very fundamental role in the relations between Brazil and the US. You have served in, as a, the diplomat service in, both in Houston and New York City. Uh, we have Bratec here on board on this meeting. How do you feel, what you could uh, recommend or suggest or, uh, about the relations, the energy relations between our countries, uh, especially in oil and gas? Thank you, Marcio. Um, let me say first that uh, I'm sure that uh, Bratec and uh, 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 Shaker, Tau Shaker here, Alexandre, uh, scheduled this uh, meeting for today because they know that uh, yesterday the, the <laughs> lower house will approve the, the gas law. Alexandre follows very closely Brazil. I know that he is on top of that agenda <laughs> and he knew it. I'm sure about that uh, a month ago when they scheduled this, this conference. And, and uh, that's my first point, the importance of uh, the approval of this law on, uh, in, the, in this bill of, in the lower house. We still have the upper house to go, but it uh, creates a lot of uh, perspectives because it's, it's really an opportunity that unlocks a lot of investment because creates uh, uh, a regulatory framework that is very well related to what we have in other uh, parts of the world. It's, uh, it's not an invention, it's a law that follows the uh, international principles. But so this is an opportunity that I see for the future very open uh, uh, in the gas sector. Uh, Petrobras is a huge gas producer. We have a lot of gas coming from the pre south and we are going to be very happy to, to supply uh, industrial uh, economic uh, sectors in Brazil uh, with gas, with cheap gas. As uh, the, uh, what happened in the uh, United States recently with the uh, lower price of gas that has created in the United States a boom in industrial areas. The, the second uh, uh, point that I'd like to mention, Marcio, is uh, that uh, many U.S. companies, uh, they should look for Brazil as uh, a natural field for expansion of their uh, operations. Brazil, uh, by all means, you just have to see what Petrobras has in terms of a strategic plan for the upcoming uh, years. And Petrobras is not the only operator in Brazil. We have uh, many other companies that are doing plans and uh, developing projects in Brazil. Uh, we see the oil and gas sector in Brazil booming in the coming years. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, uh, U.S. companies should look uh, to Brazil as one of the areas for expand their activities, especially in uh, 
when you consider in Latin America. We have a huge project. We have a strong uh, wow. regulatory framework. We have established a judiciary system. We have a regulatory agencies that provide all the necessary uh, framework for investments. That's my message. Thank you very much, Ardengue. Uh, now I'd like to, to ask Alex, uh, considering your position as uh, the as the head of OIS, the global globally in uh, Maya Brown, how do you feel this relation with the U.S. but with other uh, Asia, other other uh, continents, other countries? How do you feel Brazil? What's the temperature that you you feel Brazil in these different counts? Just to answer Roberto first, we are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we are lucky about the approval of the, of the gas law yesterday. Uh, okay, Marcio, uh, this is a very good question. I, I remember that in 2008, 2009, 2010, until 2012, Brazil was on the top three, maybe the top of the, of the global uh, oil and gas market. Everybody was looking at Brazil, was looking to invest in Brazil. The government was taking too long to take certain decisions. They were discussing the how result is good, but in the meantime, Shale came up and Brazil lost a great opportunity in the late into about around 2007 when they canceled the the bid round. And then for several years we became like I will not say an ugly place because Rio is a nice city. Brazil is a beautiful country, but it became a non attractive attractive country for oil and gas due to, I would say, mistakes or wrong decisions that, that, our, that, that the country took about our uh, oil and gas resources. Starting from 2017, 2018 with President Temer, now we're under President Bolsonaro, I can tell you that Brazil are taking the right decisions in the oil and gas market. It's very good to go to Asia or to the US or Europe nowadays and see that we, and see that it's very clear to, that a lot of companies and are interested about Brazil, what's going on here, what will be the next steps. We see nowadays new players coming to Brazil, Asians, Europeans, Americans, uh, uh, looking for opportunities. And I'm sure that, and in the beginning, mostly in upstream, ultra deep water. Now I'm sure that you will see in midstream and also onshore exploration production. And the reason is what's going on in Brazil right now, I, I like to, to use the sentence. I, I mean, I, I have been saying, I have been telling it since 2017 is much bigger than the opening of the oil and gas sector in Brazil in the late 90s. It's really impressive what's going on right now uh, and how the Brazilian market uh, will change uh, and has been changed, but it will change a lot in upcoming years in the upstream, midstream and downstream. Thank you, Alex, and congrats on your achievements and your lucky, lucky day. <laughs> uh, now I'd like to open for questions from the audience. I have with me one question for Mr. Felipe Curi. Uh, the, the question is, comes from Rich Miller. Uh, when will ANP announce the schedules in terms for round 17, 18 that have just approved by the Brazilian uh, National Council for Council for Energy Policy. Well, th this is uh, uh, a hard and easy one, I would say, because uh, we just uh, uh, um, have this approval from CNP. So we foresee in the next coming months. So before the end of the year, uh, we should have these dates uh, uh, in the in the in the calendar. So I can't say right now exactly date, but uh, that's our intent to before the end of the year. Uh, so we we have this date for for foreigners and for the companies locally uh, to be able to plan themselves ahead of the bid rounds. Uh, usually, if you look at the last few years, uh, the bid rounds happen the second part, the second semester uh, of the year. Uh, but if you've seen the recent uh, um, uh, news and, and, and comments from our minister, uh, it, everyone is working hard to have this before the second semester, 
uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that. But um, uh, we still have some working process, like I mentioned, the group that is working on the track units or the bid rounds, uh, they have uh, uh, a target to have the complete, uh, the complete work from this group by December. So by December, we should have um, more news about all the, the bid rounds in related to the pre-south and transfer of rights. Uh, but with the concession R17 and R18, we, we should have the dates before the end of the year. That's that's our uh, our intent right now. Uh, very good to hear from you, Felipe, that uh, 2021 will be a non-pandemic year for Brazil. So new bid rounds, transfer rights, the return, uh, permanent offer in the, the 17th uh, concession bid round. So good, good luck for ANP for, for Brazil. Uh, we are heading to the final part of our event. And once again, I would like to thank our guests for joining our event today. If you miss any part of it, the recording will be available at Bertec and Tayu and Sheka YouTube channels. New, new times, everybody is owners of a broadcast. Uh, I don't know if you have any more questions from the audience. And if you have, uh, so uh, you have more time, but uh, I would like now to ask our panelists to start to give the final remarks on what they are, their perspectives for the oil and gas industry in Brazil. Uh, many good news, many good coincidence, happy coincidence today. And the years to, to come after this pandemic, in my personal point of view, uh, Brazil will come stronger from this. Brazil is not in a good shape for, for the world because of the, the results, but probably will be much healthy than, uh, healthier than we were before. Not only the economical, but our personal health itself. Uh, so I'd like to start uh, with Mr. Felipe Curi, three minutes for his final considerations. Uh, there were a couple, a couple of questions and answer, and um, maybe I can answer and uh, tag along my final comments. Well, uh, there are questions about the, you know, what are major challenges as related, you know, to all the opportunities we mentioned. Uh, and I think basically, at least from the regulatory point of view, is really to create the environment uh, that is stable and predictable in terms of regulatory and policies. And I think we are working uh, in that direction. I don't think external competitors uh, uh, be the major challenge. I think all the countries they are come out coming out of this crisis with fiscal challenges. If you look everywhere, Every single country invested in, in, in response to the health crisis uh, with monetary policies, fiscal policies uh, to ensure the financial markets work, uh, to ensure the society and companies, small and mid-sized companies have a resource to continue uh, uh, pr provide uh, to, the, to the country and so on. The question for us, and I usually say that, you know, we in a marathon running with a sack of cement in, in our back. Now we have maybe two or three sacks of cement on our back. It's how fast we unload those sacks of cement by delivering the, the, the reforms that are so critical for the country, be it on the tax system, be it on administrative reforms, uh, uh, or the legal, uh, bills that we delivered just recently, you know, uh, on the gas and, and other initiatives that we take taking place. So th these are the basic challenges that I think the country faces is how fast we deliver those uh, important uh, uh, transformational change. So in the infrastructure sector, we have so many opportunities and in, in the Ministry of Infrastructure, it's, it's really uh, providing uh, uh, new opportunities in the ports, in the road system, in the railroads, which is going to enable also uh, oil and gas sector. We just mentioned the oil and gas. 
the huge opportunity we have not only in the, in the, the offshore, but also in the onshore. In the onshore, I would say that we're just scratching the surface. We, uh, as NPA regulator, we're looking to uh, make the contract simpler. We're looking to reduce the royalties for a small and mid, mid-sized mid company. Just have the approval of CMP to reduce to, to 5%. Uh, we're looking to ways uh, to reduce bureaucracy and cost of regulatories for, for the smallest and mid-sized company. We just learned uh, just recently that uh, uh, Trident acquired uh, uh, assets from Petrobras using uh, reserve based land, which is a, a financial facility, which is really good because other companies will probably be able to use that facility. So, uh, in, in answer to this question, is really important to look in how fast we enable this framework, not only on the regulation side, but also in the government policy, that investors will look to Brazil as a really uh, primary choice. Of well, not only this moment now, but years to come. Uh, oil and gas industries has to look into the long-term uh, 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 opportunities. Uh, it, it's, it's not only in this government, so it's going to be several governments in the next 25, 30 years. Uh, there will be a, a, a huge opportunities in terms of transformational uh, uh, in the oil and gas and the energy transition as well. So as Brazil is, uh, uh, has a vo vocation in the biofuels, in the clean energy. So this transition is going to happen, and Brazil uh, uh, is preparing to to be a very, very attractive country for those investments to fulfill. There is one last comment in the commission. In the commission, we already have 75 uh, projects submitted to NP, 53 of them. Uh, approved, which means about 25 billion uh, reais of uh, plans already submitted to, to NP. This is another area that is going to uh, uh, open opportunities for several service companies in that front. Uh, and we are working on the, the, the regulation to make it easier for comps uh, and for, for investors to, to look in that opportunity as well. As, uh, operators move to, to different installation, divest, and so on. Uh, the commission is it's an important uh, opportunity. With that, uh, I will I would like to thank uh, uh, the panelists, my colleagues, uh, Marcio, uh, Roberto, and Alex, and Norman, uh, and the Bratec for the great opportunity to participate in this panel to uh, give you a brief overview of what NP uh, is working on. Uh, as I mentioned before, NP uh, it, it's it's really in a transformation mode to address these new markets, and I hope to continue to support and participate in the new field. Sorry that we extend a little bit of the time, but I wanted to answer those two questions that uh, I see in the panel. Thank you, Marcio. Thank you, Felipe. Brazil is a country of plenty of opportunities. Law of the commission is another important uh, opportunity that's ahead of us. Uh, thank Philip for your comments, for your participation. And now I'd like to to hear um, uh, Roberto Ardengue about his final comments on this panel and his vision about that. Thank you, Marcio. Uh, I think that you all uh, here. Uh, and saw here that uh, there are a lot of opportunities, huge opportunities in Brazil in the oil and gas sector and uh, opportunities that are across the border, either through the bidding routes that uh, ANP is promoting uh, or uh, through the divestment project that Petrobras is also uh, offering to the market. Uh, uh, today, uh, what I can assure you as Petrobras board member is that Petrobras is a uh, totally business-oriented company. We are run uh, by uh, our board, President Roberto Castelo Branco, and all the board members are technical people uh, selected by technical criteria, and uh, we are very focused on keeping a very high level of governance, of uh, stability, of ethics in our business. And uh, we are eager to, uh, to look for, uh, receive you uh, for discussing business opportunities in Brazil. 
So thank you very much for uh, Bratec, for uh, Meyer, Brown, and Tau Checker for this uh, good opportunity for us to, to expand, explain some of those opportunities here to the audience. And I look forward to see you in the future. Bye-bye. Thank you, Roberto. Petrobras is, we are, as Brazilians, we are very proud of our main company. Uh, it's, I guess it's a, it's a global uh, player, uh, very important. Congratulations on your achievements, recent achievements. The news about the lifting costs, I report to, to repeat that $2.53 per barrel is uh, in the pre-salt lifting costs is something very, very, very difficult to, 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 to have in other, other places. Now we have the Mr. Alex Checker talking about the, his final considerations. And I'd like to put something uh, what, what do you feel the com uh, external competitors or our regulatory infra infrastructure problems? What do you see the, you as a lawyer, as a, a, a legal uh, guy uh, with a, a lot of experience? How do you feel the Brazilian environment in, in the, the Congress level, the, the court and, the, and everything? Thank you, Marcio. I mean, this is, I'd like to start, and this is, I was thinking about it when, before you make the question, <laughs> because I, I like to talk about the history in Brazil. 1997, the Petróleo Law, 1998, the first, the Blue Blocks, round zero, 1999, the first bid round in Brazil. Uh, at that time, we had as President Cardoso, was the president of Brazil. 2002, we have got a leftist government in Brazil, until 2016, six, uh, with the impeachment of President Dilma Rousseff. And the good news about in the meantime, we had pre salt the output in Brazil came from 800,000 barrels of oil a day, right? In 1998, now it's about 3 million gas equivalent and it will go to 4.4 in about two years, maybe 5.7 in about five years. This is, these are the numbers that I heard. So, the good news is we had a leftist government, we had pre salt massive oil discoveries, and the rules are there. I mean, we did not have any arbitration regarding investments in Brazil. We did not have any change of rules uh, for the oil companies. Someone can say that the rules were not good before, uh, but they were there and they were respected by the government. So uh, it shows a big stability in Brazil regarding the regulatory framework. It's a big democracy. It's a truly democracy. Uh, uh, we have now, uh, uh, right now, a government very pro-market. We have the head of parliament and the parliament very pro-market. Uh, Brazil understands that we need for investments, we need partners to develop the country. Uh, Petrobras needs partners. And, and it has been a very good partner of many IOCs and service companies. So uh, in comparison with, with other countries, and, uh, and nowadays, I mean, we don't have this comparison anymore, but I used to hear that, and nothing against Venezuela, but it's not a, a stable place, or even Argentina, that's not very stable as well. Uh, we have been in Latin America, among with Colombia and Chile, I would say, a paradise regarding stability of, of the regulatory framework. And, they, and in the oil gas, the interest is not different. So said that, Marcio, I think that uh, uh, nowadays the, the, the major, I mean, the IOCs, the super majors, the service companies, they understand that they can invest in Brazil, that they are not going to have any kind of, how can I say, expropriation or potential issue with the Brazilian government. The rule of law works here. Um, you can see like, I mean, car wash. I mean, a lot of big guys that went to jail. So it's a truly example that the rule of law works here. Um, number two, regarding opportunities, I think we have discussed it here. Upstream, ultra deep water, onshore, midstream, the new gas law or trans slash transportation law. A lot of opportunities in the, in the infrastructure in Brazil and also to supply the natural gas market in Brazil that we have a lot to develop. And in the downstream, Petrobras divestment in the refineries, uh, and also uh, 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 the opportunity to, I mean, once you don't have like the monopoly de facto from Petrobras, I'm sure that a lot of investors 
will be willing to to build i mean and to invest in the constructions of of new downstream facilities in brazil because regardless of the government that we that we are going to have in, the, in about two years or six years or ten years uh, 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 it will be an open and a very competitive market so i think all good news yeah uh, thank you alex uh, i me as moderator i'm very happy to 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 have you this uh, in, in this event. Uh, so many good news uh, and a lot of opportunities. Opportunities to, we have, uh, I would like to add in my final comments that uh, on top of that, of all, 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 all those opportunities, we have uh, a skilled workforce trained by Petrobras, my my situation is a, a mature guy from Petrobras, uh, so was my my school. Uh, but to have uh, thousands of students in the universities and in technical schools going to the market, uh, petroleum engineering, geology, uh, aiming at a career, a professional career in the oil and gas sector. Uh, of course, looking for the energy transition, but to have a lot of opportunities uh, in Brazil to the young people to start uh, their career or even be entrepreneurs in starting with uh, small uh, service companies, small consultants, and even small energy companies. And so I'd like to stimulate all of you to look more Brazil to Pay attention to the good news, not only the, the gossips, the discussions and the, that, that are everywhere in the social media, but to look at the real Brazil and you know, have a lot of opportunities to partner with Petrobras uh, to invest uh, in a, a solid risk uh, career in Brazil. Uh, as was said here, companies from uh, different continents are coming to Brazil more and more. And uh, this is a land of opportunities. The sun is shining, not only today, but to be brighter and brighter in the energy sector. Uh, so I'd like to say thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, uh, time to go to the end of this transmission. And uh, I, I hope all of you have uh, a nice and safe uh, almost evening, but still in the winter time in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, Guanabara Bay, this is very, very nice landscape is open, is warm to welcome you every, every, every time. Thank you. Thank you.